Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Router 2 Brief. This is your host, Steve. Today we're going to be talking about cycling your tank and what that means exactly. Hey everybody, welcome to Router Studios, where I do all my music recording. Ah, that first cup of coffee is the best. I got a handful of messages thanking me for the show and people learn a lot and a lot of those people are newcomers to the saltwater aquarium hobby so i wanted to do some shows here and there geared towards the basics of saltwater aquarium keeping now most of you out there already know this information <clears throat> but a lot of people don't and we take it for granted that we learned this stuff a long time ago and we just kind of do it like second nature that's what she said cycling your tank is probably one of the most frustrating things in a saltwater aquarium hobby because it requires waiting and cycling your tank is when you have to wait and let the tank cycle what does that mean it means you buy a new saltwater aquarium you're excited <clears throat> you see all these colorful fish that you just have to have and you want to put them in right away well when you get that saltwater aquarium tank, you're gonna fill it with salt water, right? One cup of salt per gallon of water. You're gonna put sand in there, you're gonna put rock in there, and you heard the term live rock and live sand. That means there's beneficial bacteria growing on the sand and in the rocks. It's gonna spread to your glass <coughs> and everywhere else in your tank. Bacteria, ugh, that's disgusting. Who wants bacteria in the tank? Bacteria is bad. Well, not this kind of bacteria. You need this in your tank for your fish and livestock to thrive. And that bacteria needs to spread. If it doesn't, you will not have life in your tank. And this is how it works. So you have this fish, you put him in a tank. Let's just say one fish, okay? The salt water is completely clean. That fish goes to the bathroom, pee or urine. It's ammonia. Ammonia is toxic. Fish goes to the bathroom again, more ammonia, and so on and so forth. That ammonia will suffocate the fish. It'll deplete the oxygen levels in the water. The fish will die. You'll notice things such as erratic swimming. Um, <clears throat> they don't seem to quite know where they are. They'll stare out into space. They won't eat. They'll start swimming on their side or upside down. They'll bump into the glass. Fish know when the glass is coming up at the end of the tank and they'll stop and turn around, swim the other way. They'll bump into it. They just won't look quite right. They'll be out of it, dazed and confused, okay? Um, this is signs of ammonia poisoning. Could also be ick or other uh, problems with the fish, but mostly you're going to see this with a new tank, ammonia poisoning. It's a big mistake that a lot of um, reefers make. So <clears throat> how do we get around this? You need to get that ammonia out of the tank. And how is that done? Beneficial bacteria. When you start a new tank, there's no bacteria in there. The water is completely clear. The glass is clean. The rocks are clean. The sand is clean. There's nothing in that tank to take care of that ammonia and get rid of it. The bacteria is going to eat that stuff, break it down, all right? So how do you get bacteria in your tank? Well, some people who are bad will take some fish that are inexpensive and they'll put them in the tank, all right? And their waste, their fish pee and their fish crap will go to the bottom on the sand. It'll start to rot and deteriorate and this will start a slow bacterial process. The fish will wind up dying because they'll suffocate from the amounts of ammonia in the water. This is not a good practice and it's cruel to the fish. What I have done with nothing living in the tank, you set it up, you turn on your pumps, everything's good to go. You're going to feed your tank even though there's nothing in there to eat the food. I use pellet food. I would uh, put a pinch of pellets every day for about a week <clears throat> and then just let it in there. Let it decay and rot it's a slow process cycling your tank takes approximately four to six weeks what a lot of people do as well and this works really nice they'll go to butcher 
the butcher and they will take some shrimp, dead shrimp, you know, like you're going to eat, and they'll put a piece of shrimp in the tank. Just let it rot. Bacteria will start to grow and harvest, and it's a slow process once again. Between feeding your tank and putting that piece of shrimp in there, you should be good to go. And I didn't use the shrimp. I just fed my tank and I let that stuff decay. There's other ways you can start the cycle in your tank. They have bacteria in a bottle which you can purchase. It works really well. However, keep in mind that bacteria is sitting on the shelf and it's just in that bottle and it can actually die and go bad. So in essence, you're buying a bottle of nothing. If you have um, a friend who has an aquarium, you can take a sponge, a brand new sponge for filtering, lay it in their tank or in their sump and let the bacteria grow and infest itself on that sponge or that filtration media for about three weeks, four weeks. Just let it get in there. After that time, you can take that sponge, put it in your sump, and that bacteria will start to grow at a rapid rate and colonize things. It really helps speed up the process. Another thing you can do is purchase some live rock. Live rock you can get from a friend, or a local reef store, fish shop, whatever you want to call it. And live rock already has the beneficial bacteria on it. That's why it's called live, because the bacteria is living and thriving on that rock. Um, you put that in your tank, and it'll start the process. That bacteria will start to colonize and spread throughout your tank. Now, I don't buy live rock after my tank is cycled, because it can bring in parasites and other nasty things that you don't want in your water that will kill your fish. However, when you're starting a brand new saltwater aquarium tank, it's totally fine to put live rock in, all right? Because <clears throat> you're gonna leave that tank empty for six weeks before you put fish in there anyway to give the bacteria a chance to colonize. And if there's no fish present in the water, the, bacteria, the parasite will die because there's nothing to feed on. So you're safe. That's the only time I would recommend purchasing live rock, okay, is when you're starting to cycle your tank. Questions or comments, let me know on that below. Um, you can also, and I recommend purchasing live sand. Carib Sea has a great live sand product. You put that sand bed in the bottom of your tank. There's live sand or non-live sand. It's always a great idea to start your tank with a live sand bed comes with a beneficial bacteria again the bacteria will die off and it's called die off you'll have some die off already in the bag dead bacteria but that's okay because most of it is alive you're gonna put that sand bed down and you're gonna let that bacteria grow so between a live sand bed and a possible live rock but not necessary you feed your tank just a pinch of pellet food, let it lay on the bottom of the sand bed, do that for a week, and uh, let that bacteria grow. Now what you're going to want to do is get yourself an ammonia test kit, alright? You can get this pretty much anywhere. I like to use ammonia test kits from API, there's a lot of other companies out there that do a really great job. You're going to want to test, you're going to fill up the vial of 5 milliliters of water, follow the instructions put how many drops in that they call for to test. You're going to line that color up with the color card that they give you. And depending on the color of the water to the chart, it's going to tell you how much ammonia is in your water. You want zero. All right. And when I did it, um, for the longest time, the water was a dark orange, almost red. It means there's a lot of ammonia in that water. You want it gone. The bacteria will build up over time, four to six weeks, and then once it gets strong enough and there's enough bacteria in there, that color will be yellow per my test kit. Once it's yellow, it means that there's enough bacteria in that water to get rid of that ammonia. It means it's ready to put fish in. However, you want to go at a slow rate because you don't want to have a large bio load. A bio load is the amount of fish you have, the amount of load, right? One fish per month, roughly, 
keep in mind that the larger fish you buy, the larger bio load you're going to have. First of all, you don't want to stock a lot of large fish in your tank. There's not going to be much room for them to swim, and your bio load is going to be much larger. <clears throat> keep that in mind. Um, some fish grow to be larger than what your tank can handle, size-wise and bio load-wise. So what you're going to do is put one fish in, monitor it, make sure it's fine once you have no ammonia in that tank, always zero ammonia. And then about a month later, month and a half, I know you're excited, I know you want more fish in there, but you can't do it. And I was guilty of this too when I started. And I thought, why are they dying? I think two passed away. One was sick, but the other one, it, the tank just wasn't ready to handle the extra waste. The extra pee and the extra solids, the fish crap, right? Um, the bacteria can only knock out so much of that. The bacteria will break down the ammonia into nitrites. The nitrites will turn into nitrates. And the nitrates have to be removed through either water changes, rinsing out or replacing your filter media, at least once a week if you're using a sump sock every three days because you don't want that nasty water filtering through all that nitrate fish waste and everything nitrates are bad they need to be removed by water changes weekly vacuuming stuff like that okay um, and that's what cycling a tank is that's the process ammonia is broken down that's the first stage by bacteria and then to nitrites and then nitrates and nitrates are removed from your tank if you have a lot of nitrates in your tank the fish can deal with it but you should remove them corals do not like nitrates whatsoever all right and it can also it will affect your inverts like your shrimp and stuff like that you need to get rid of those nitrates so you need to test for nitrates um, if you need to get rid of nitrates you can also ha use a bio pellet reactor there's videos on that or do a Google search for bio pellet reactor or a YouTube search or you can sugar dose I have videos on sugar dosing it's when you literally take a little bit of sugar and put it in your aquarium I put it in the sump the sugar or vodka will feed your bacteria causing more of them to grow at a rapid rate and get rid of that nitrate a protein skimmer is needed in the aquarium hobby the saltwater aquarium hobby a protein skimmer do a search on that if you don't know what it is it exports the nitrates for you and gets rid of all the fish waste a protein skimmer is awesome it's one of the best things you can get for your biological filtration known as the Berlin method the Berlin method is what I just spoke about now you're gonna use your live rock and sand to filter out all the bad things the breakdown the ammonia to the nitrite nitrate to the nitrate nitrate is exported through the protein skimmer or water changes all right I know this is confusing and you're thinking oh my god what else don't I know but this is the process this is what it is and it's a very important step so I had someone send me a message last week asking hey my fish are dying I moved them all into a quarantine tank which is a separate tank a hospital tank and they didn't know what was going on they thought they had parasites so I asked them a few questions and they said I'm new to the hobby that's number one and then I said I don't know what's going on um, I set up the tank and everything's really nice and the water's crystal clear <clears throat> great second question how long have you had this tank uh, two days two days way too soon you never put a fish in before four weeks you gotta test the water Make sure you get ammonia. You might test the water after a week and then, hey, I don't have any ammonia. Well, probably because there's not enough present in the water. You have to let that ammonia appear before it can be readable by tests. Once you get that ammonia, you're going to see an ammonia spike. And that's what's going to kill your fish. So that's why you can't have any fish. The ammonia is going to spike at a really high rate. And then once that bacteria level grows to the point where it can handle all that bacteria, the ammonia will plummet to zero. And then you're fine to put fish in, not before. So anyway, you guys, that's it. <clears throat> I know this was a little longer video than normal. I like to keep it around a few minute mark, but hey, sometimes we're going to get longer videos. 
Hope you learned something from this. Uh, thank you to all the subscribers. I really appreciate you guys. Thank you for supporting the channel and all your great comments. Enjoy your reef tank aquariums, and I'll see you next Saturday. Thank <laughs> you.